Artists, let's talk about surfaces. First and foremost, we need something to paint on. So I've got my favorite supplies here and we're gonna talk about different products that you can use and how to prepare them. Easiest and cheapest, I would say, go for paper. Well, you can use watercolor paper or my favorite here is Stonehenge paper. It's a printmaker's paper. It's not very thick, but it really holds the paint. And you'll see in almost all of my videos when I'm using paper, this is the paper that I use. It comes in a lot of different colors. You can get it in craft color, which I think is my favorite color to use. You can get it in bright white. And there's several other grays and shades of um, neutrals that you can choose to paint on. Also arches or Strathmore watercolor paper is great. What I love is smooth paper. This is very smooth, has no texture on it. So a hot press watercolor paper would do the same for you. If you love texture, go for a cold press and then you're going to end up with all kinds of texture when you paint. Uh, as far as canvas goes, I don't buy cheap canvases because they can rip and tear very easily. I go for these Artist Loft from Michaels Level 2 or Level 3. Level 2 and Level 3 both have very good strong canvas pre-gessoed. You can see on the back that they've got this nice um, spleen um, binding. That's not the important part. The important part is really the quality of the wood that's holding this canvas together and the quality of this canvas that it's thick enough. When you buy the cheap student ones, it can rip and tear. However, if you're in practice mode and you don't care about that, the important part is to give it extra gesso. Here is Artist Loft Level 3. The key to the three is really just the fact that it's thick. So there's one of my older paintings. I called this one Maui. I think I painted it in 2014. But the quality of the canvas just really holds up, you know? And, um, and you know, then I write all my details on the back. It's also been spleened um, for its gallery wrap. But stapled back is totally fine. Just look for something one step up from student grade. That's what I ask uh, for you to consider. But you know what? If you want to just practice on cheap canvas that's fine what we're going to do is we're going to practice adding gesso to it and so this is really the simplest thing you can do take it apart and add another layer of gesso gesso i love the liquitex professional gesso because that's going to be just a little bit higher quality and it's really fluid it's not thick or chunky or gritty it's just the right consistency and i use this for uh, my white paint when I'm painting. I use it for texture, for surface, for whatever, but I always love to add another layer of gesso to my canvas because it protects it. How are we going to spread this out? Well, you have two ways you can do that. Use a brayer, and that's just gonna spread it super fast. And you know, then you don't have to worry about, you know, getting your brush all, all um, filled with paint. But this does also leave texture. Look, you gotta look for these little extras. That's just dried paint that got in there somehow. So if you like texture, roll it out with a brayer. If you don't want texture, let's do this. Just take your, take your brush and brush it out. Now, if you are using student grade canvases, then put on two coats, even if it says it's got gesso on it. That ex those extra coats of gesso are going to protect that surface, make it a little thicker, and make it more durable so that it doesn't rip or tear later on. Um, I like texture, but if you don't want any texture, then you just need to come back and forth a couple of times with your brush in both directions until it becomes smooth. Let it dry completely. It shouldn't take longer than a half hour, depending on your climate. All right, so that's all I do for my canvas surfaces is add on an extra coat of gesso. Uh, what else do we have here? I'm going to put this to the side to dry. Paper's kind of the same way, but I want to tell you, you have a couple of choices. You can use paper like this without ever taping it down. Um, that's my favorite. I just put on a little bit, roll it out with a brayer. That's my favorite thing to do. This was a dirty brayer, so that was probably not the smartest thing, but let me tell you what happens. This is because I love to do mixed media, and I love all the weird textures and marks, and I don't care that it's <laughs> I don't really care that it's dirty. I don't need my paint to go all the way to the edges either if I don't want it to because I want those edges to look raw and interesting. That's a personal preference. You can also brush it out and you can make sure that it's going all the way to the edges or I'm going to put this to the side or you can take your tape and tape it down and give yourself a nice clean edge which a lot of artists really love to do. So in this case you know, you just measure, you can visually, or you can measure it out. You can use a board. Sometimes if you're going to tape 
you can tape it down to a board so you can move it about and have several pieces going at once. I'm just taping it to my table right now. So this is blue painter's tape. There might be better um, choices out there, but I just think this is so easy to find. It's um, pretty affordable and it works. It really does work. I, I remember when I first started painting, I was using masking tape and masking tape will tear, but now we have so many great products on the market. Um, so here you go. So now it's all taped out. I can put my little bit on, I can brush, and I'm using the brown paper because it makes it easy for you to see how it just brushes on. I probably have too much water on my brush, but that's good that it's taped down then because that's gonna keep it all in place. And you let it completely dry before you tear off the edges. How do you help it dry quicker? Well, in this case, you would let it dry and then you paint your painting on it. We can just have a little bit of fun with it. I'm just scratching into the wet, that wet gesso. It leaves such a cool texture. Look, quick dry. I'm just doing this really quick to show you how working on a taped down surface is gonna look. And maybe instead of a brayer, I'm gonna just brush that out and give you this beautiful rust color. I love how those two mix together. And then you can just go ahead and see the results. Create a nice, clean edge. You can do this on any size paper, any type of paper. And there you go. So that's one option. Again, like I said, I use this one. I used a brayer and I didn't tape it down and I like to paint and leave those edges raw. I'll usually use uh, pages like this. Sometimes I'll mat and frame them. Sometimes I like them floating in a frame so that we can see those raw edges. I find them really fascinating, the edges to me. So that's why you won't see me tape off very often, but it is totally a valid way to create your artwork by taping it off. All right, let's move on to one more surface that we need to prepare. This is a birch panel wood. Sometimes they come pre-gessoed, but the truth of the matter is I love the raw ones like this. This is just plain wood. I get them from Blick online. You can also get them on Amazon. Uh, I believe Michaels is carrying them now, but I find that these are really affordable. Here's the key though. I love these raw edges. So what I do is I take this blue tape and I tape off all my edges so that I can protect it from the paint as I paint. So now that your edges are all taped up and protected, we can add a layer of gesso. But in this case, instead of adding the white gesso, which you can do, sure, if you want a white surface, in my case, I love to use clear gesso. And the reason is, it says clear gesso on it. It's kind of hard to tell because they look almost the same. But the reason I do this is because I really love that wood to show through as part of my design. So if I'm gonna work abstractly and I want that wood to be part of the design, I put a clear gesso on, let it dry. That protects the wood. It makes it so that the next layers of paint don't absorb as much. And there you go. You can just create uh, on clear gesso. And you can use clear gesso on any surface. If you like had linen canvas, or if you were using a brown, um, brown paper, uh, colored paper that you wanted to have show through, you can just use a clear gesso as that extra layer. There you go. See, look, it's going to leave a little texture so the paint will grip on it and it'll be, it'll help you create a more interesting painting. If you don't want to tape the sides, you can just paint it later. That's totally an option. So there you go. We have surfaces. We have wood, paper, canvas. Oh, you choose what surface you're going to work on and let's get painting.